Hello YouTube, thank you for tuning in. The NCVEC has crafted some interesting questions for the amateur radio license exam. And today, we'll dive into some of the most fascinating questions and explore the potential Easter eggs and rabbit holes you might encounter while studying for your exam. I'm Rob, W1RCP. Let's take a look. So let's begin with the extra the most non-interesting and most complicated exam. So from the extra exam, expiring on July 1st of 2024, we have a question that really messed me up. Now, it's really not an Easter egg and it's definitely not a rabbit hole, but this first one really, had, when I read it online, I couldn't figure out what it was, but read carefully because in each four of the answer choices, only one word changed in each answer. It's exposure versus emission. So the correct answer is B to this one. We need to ensure that our signals from our station are less than the uncontrolled maximum permitted exposure limits. The second interesting question from the extra exam is about FT4. And I just found it kind of funny because the answer choices sound like my ADHD patterns. Uh, B says stations take turns on alternate days. And D says it depends on the lunar phase. Well, alrighty then. And the third one. The last and only other interesting question from the extra exam is a rabbit hole that I started down. Do you know who Lee DeForest and Edwin Howard Armstrong are? Check this one out. They were actually rivals in the pioneering of radio. Lee DeForest created the Audion Tube in 1906, so that's Audion. Of course, you probably can see that on the screen, but it could amplify weak electric signals. And this invention was fundamental in the development of radio, television, and long distance telephone systems. But Edwin Howard Armstrong took it to the next level by understanding how the audion tube worked. Now the audion tube could also be sort of a primitive triode tube and it was used for amplification and they used positive feedback to gain multiple levels of amplification, which pioneered the introduction of FM broadcast. So Edward Howard Armstrong sued Lee DeForest over patent infringements because that Lee DeForest guy used the stuff that Edwin Armstrong had already sort of created. Here's the sad part. Edwin Howard Armstrong gave up his life a month before his suits were either won or settled. Now, from the sources that I read, his wife, she stayed strong to make sure that those suits were either won or settled. And I believe two were won and the rest were settled. And she probably won millions of dollars. So, have you lost hope? Please do not give up. And quoting Edwin Howard Armstrong, he said, men substitute words for realities and then argue about the words. There are power in your words. Speak life and seek help, please. If you are in a crisis, there is help. It's the 988lifeline.org. And you can call 988 or text 988. And if you can't call this help center, call a friend you trust right now. Let's take a break from the serious note. From that, that's, that's some of the takeaway that I took from the Edwin Armstrong and DeForest um, rabbit hole. I'm telling you, it was a rabbit hole. Okay, the general exam is next. Now this general exam was the most uninteresting exam as far as Easter eggs and rabbit holes, but 
There were some funnies if you read a little bit deeper. I read really deep into this one. As a QRP operator sometimes, and friends of guys who that's all they do is QRP, operating QRP does not elicit a quick response. In fact, sometimes we can call CQ for an hour and not get a response. In fact, I did one the other night. It's part of a two-part series, Activating Eagle Island. I called CQ so long and the reply was so poor that I didn't even put it in the video because I was impatient and I kept keying over the person who was mes uh, CW messaging me back. So yeah, I, t I took it out, it was an edit. But uh, transmission using quick res response protocol is definitely not what QRP is. The correct answer for that one just happens to be B, it is low power operation. So for voice, it's typically 10 watts or less and for CW, it is five watts or less. And digital is also five watts or less. The receive signal is more natural sounding question choice for which of the following statements is true of Vox operation versus PTT operation. I, I, again, I read a little bit deeper into this one than, than you should read into the questions, but you know, looking at these questions, I'm an amateur extra, no code extra, I'm not proud of that. I do code, I love CW, I probably could pass a 20 word per minute um, exam uh, if, I, if it was the right day. But, the Vox, <laughs> the Vox part of me looking through all I think there's like 19, 18 or 1900 questions, and yes, I read every single one of them. I did not read the latest extra exam. Uh, so in a minute, we were talking about, or a minute ago, we were talking about the extra exam. That one actually does expire soon. But that statement is not true of Vox operation versus PTT, but it has happened. Google Ham's falling asleep with their box turned on, or YouTube it, and you'll see that uh, maybe on 80 meters, that is the um, more natural sound. <laughs> okay, again, I want to preface this by saying you can't really read into what the BECs were thinking when they created these questions. But did someone poke fun at nets always complaining about their frequency their frequency for the last 100 years. So if you're operating effectively, it's, uh, nets do not have priority. I mean, news, news to some of y'all that have been running nets for anywhere between 15 minutes and 15 years, 20 years, your net doesn't have priority if the frequency is already in use. But go ahead and go listen out there on some 20 and 40 meters and find out what happens. Okay, we're on to the last couple of Easter eggs. There, there, there's 11 questions, but there's only 10 points that I'm making today. From the technician exam, if you've ever scrolled past 7.200 in the evenings, not only is willful interference permitted, it's apparently encouraged. But what about the obscenity that you hear? And I've heard, of, heard obscenity in other places. Like, I'm holding this right here, this imaginatory thing. I heard some obscenity directed towards a whole family. Or maybe just the mom of the family. And that night, that was a spicy frequency. But 7.200 is definitely a spicy frequency. So the transmission of language that may be considered indecent or obscene Maybe that's just today's society. But hey, you get on ham radio. Ham radio is a small slice of society. And if you go to 80 meters, you'll find out that not all ham radio is licensed amateur radio operators. Go look up some of their call signs and you'll see some junk. Alrighty, this question, technician, section seven, sub, sub element, 
seven, that is uh, sub-element C, question number eight. Which instrument can be used to determine SWR? On a live stream the other night, I read this. It was the first time I had seen it, but iambic pentameter was, was quite good. And so iambic pentameter is actually how Shakespeare would have written something. Do like and subscribe my channel to grow. It's kind of like a heartbeat. So it's uh, 10 syllables and the even numbered syllables have an accent on them. And this one right here, the Tesla effect, huh? What type of transistor has a gate drain and it's C, Tesla effect. I tried to find an electronics term that was the Tesla effect and I had no luck. My search results through Dogpile, Tesla effect is a game on Steam described as motivated by lost love, revenge, and the world's strongest coffee blend. Tex must retrace his own steps into a maze of unsolved murders, hidden agendas, and lost technologies of Nikola Tesla. Only by solving the mysteries of his past can Tex hope to regain his memory in time to restore what's been lost and stop a terrifying future. It's a game. A freaking game. Now, did they mean it like that? I don't know. Probably not. It's probably a bunch of fat old guys. But at any rate, this is the last one. The greatest Easter egg of them all. It wasn't an Easter egg until I think around March of 2022 when two guys, and you'll see it on the screen in green down at the bottom, uh, the two guys had the idea, I guess they were going through the technician license exam right as it was posted for, for uh, that six month review before the exam went live um, through the NCVEC. And they bought ftaconverter.com domain. They bought it. And so you can actually go to it and check it out. And they set the record straight that it is fictional um, but now it's just one of those Easter eggs. <laughs> so go type that one in your browser's address bar. How are the transceiver audio input and output connected in a station configured to operate using FT8? Hmm, to a computer connected to the FT8converter.com website. That is not the correct answer. Thank you for watching. Your support means the world. Grateful for each view.